question to Tom Reeve on the question that he asked at the last quote, at, the, at his last slide. What exactly are the policy implications uh, that result out of, the, uh, of that study? Because it, if I read it, it seems like you let it be. I mean, the, 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 the private sector will operate on its own, and you know, then if, if you this intervention from the government, and everything will work as in terms of structural transformation in the long term. The, then what do we say to the government in terms of their policies, for example, of SMEs, promotion of small and medium enterprises to fast track rural industrialization? The second part of that is how about facilitating trade in the short and medium term? For example, um, it, we know that 2007 and 2008, a large portion of the food price crisis was government induced in many, in many respects. So there does seem to be a role for government, and in, in particular for rice, we also had a separate study that says a large portion of the price volatility is because of the thin market in rice, which is in contrast to corn, where there's a lot more of corn of uh, private sector participation. The second issue I have is on the intellectual and the technology transfer. The past, the past decades showed that technology transfer to small scale was done effectively through CGIR, like ERI, and through a lot of government, of a lot of ODA assistance, and of course, for a certain extent, the, the, the government. But in the present, we see now that a large, a large funds, large of the funds, are now with the private sector. But they come up with the issue of IPR, because IPR is important for them, so that they will have an, an, an incentive for a returns of investment. Would that have implications in terms of inclusive technology transfer for small-scale farmers, which we've seen in the past modality? The third one, which brings me the spatial aspect and also in the intertemporal was let's move towards uh, helping Africa so that they will become less import of rice and become more or less like self-sufficient. However, I, I, I'm confused with that argument because the, stu the studies also show that by 2050, in fact, the best way really is to help those who have comparative advantage in producing rice and the comparative advantage is unfortunately maybe in Asia where 90% is being produced for rice which means that for which, which in, in that context it means that facilitate trade maybe the, more, the advocacy should be towards facilitating more trade so that there will be lower cost of importation for Africa in the short and medium term, while we also invest more in the technology. Um, yes. Um, oh. <clears throat> this is a fantastic question, obviously. <clears throat> I think that there's, you know, clearly, in, including in your question, the birth of the answer in that on one side, there's sort of deregulations and avoidance of bad regulations that are crucial to allowing this thing to flourish, at least on the efficiency side. And then there's good regulations and good investments that are necessary for it to flourish on the equity side. Uh, wow, I'm gonna write that down, that sounds good. Um, but I was just thinking that on one side, for example, uh, and going back to Prabhu's point about how you usher in these changes, the public extension in our studies has been shown to be terrible, basically non-existent. There's a lot of extension agents, but the actual delivery is zero or negative or, you know, in many of the situations. And so, and that's for farming, let alone for SME activities in these other sectors, logistics, training, et cetera, et cetera. So strengthening that as a public investment seems crucial on the equity side. And then secondly, there's you know the issue of certification and traceability that will be necessary for this and the existence of <coughs> adequate 
um, inspection and certification agencies rather than just bribe taking you know groups is it absolutely central and everybody basically says they're just paying a lot of money out you know for uh, for payments to these people but it's not really effective in certification there's also you know the issue of um, various kinds of public investments in roads and improvement of logistics which is very important um, reducing bribes along the road improving the quality of the roads etc access roads all those things are kind of being very important probably more important than rice technology and productivity level in terms of the effects of cost to consumers uh, and then there's the issue of credit availability you know again Kisan credit cards in India have been what we've seen in our studies a major success very equitable you know very widely distributed among the poor in various areas very effective in helping investment but not available enough okay so there's a, another specific thing but on the side of getting out of the way you know then you kind of contradict the equity point but move toward the um, the efficiency points and the biggest thing that occurred in India that again probably had more effect on the cost of rice than uh, than all of the technology changes in rice in the 1990s and 2000s, that's my hypothesis, was de-reserving the milling sector. Instead of reserving it for very tiny hand-pounded mills, you de-reserved it and led to a massive investment in automation and the scale increase. The larger scale mills in both China and India have a far higher utilization of their capacity and much more efficient, okay, and etc. So if you, you know, we can go into this, but it seems that there's those two sets of policies, getting out of the way, making investments, um, improving the services available to not just farmers. As I say, farmers are minor actors in this chain. They're one of the actors, but they're important actors, but they're just one. But helping all those other segments of the chain to develop and to be equitable and efficient will in the end lead to the improvement of, um, of food security overall in the, that economy. I want to talk about South-South trade, but I can't, I'm sure, because of time. Yes, uh, yeah, thank you, Tom, and, uh, and uh, you know, I'm sorry to break this very interesting discussion, but we're out of time, and uh, I would like to thank all the presenters and Prabhu. Okay, we're next, right?
domestically in their own countries. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let me thank all the presenters of the room for an um, active participation. We are only eight minutes delay, late uh, from our coffee break. Uh, we'll take a coffee break for 22 minutes. We'll come back here at 4.30 uh, for our mass market outlook session. So coffee is out this outside here. And thank you very much for your participation. Please join me in the... Thank you.